Hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of Plenty with Sulu. Today we have a leading business personality and he's a professional banker. He is the deputy chairman of Commercial Bank and the president of Sri Lanka Institute of Directors. His name is Mr. Preeti Jawardhana. Today we are going to have a discussion about Sri Lanka and the future of our economy. Hi Preeti. Just to ask you before we start it. Now Preeti Jawardhana is a well-known name in the business industry and banking. But according to me you are someone who is uh, very simple as a person. Yeah. Uh, so Lo- so Lochana, well I have a very very modest beginning, right? I was raised in Kalania, that's my hometown. Fortunately my parents sent me to the probably the best school in the country. Okay, I know the which best. I am very proud of. Right. And uh, well, I excelled in sports while I was at school. I played hockey, table tennis, uh, and also I was a senior cadet. And I, my aspiration was to become an engineer because I did my double maths, physics, chemistry. But unfortunately, I could not enter the Peradeniya University. So eventually, I had to change course and I ended up as an accountant, a chartered accountant. Well, while uh, studying at Royal, uh, I was an average student. I don't say that I was a very brilliant student, but I managed my uh, time well and without giving much trouble to my parents. Uh, I did all my examinations well. I, I don't know whether I had come across a single exam. I did my chartered, I did my CMI UK. And uh, then of course uh, I got married pretty young. I think uh, I was hardly 26 years. And uh, believe it or not, just one week after my marriage, I took wings to uh, Africa, Zambia. But after qualifying as a chartered accountant, which I consider is one of the most difficult examinations which I ever faced, and I, had, of course, were able to complete all my exams in the first shy. That was a great achievement. I was pretty young when I got through. Then I did not, I joined uh, Turkon Youngs at that time, they were called Ernest Young, but I didn't like the profession. So I, within six months, I got out of the profession and got into the industry com- and commerce. Joined Carson Cumberbatch and Company. I'd, I'd love to work in a hotel because that was my ambition. And I managed three of their hotels, okay. Gritale, Moonlight Beach Lodge and Pegasus and also the travel, they, they were the agents for KLM. So I enjoyed but two years. But uh, one thing which I will never forget is Mr. MTL Fernando, who was the president partner at uh, Turkon Youngs. When I wanted to leave the profession, he called me and he had a chat with me and he said, son, the best thing that I would advise you is if you could, how, how many countries you could see the world, travel, see the world. He said that I am getting old, but uh, my sight is getting, giving me trouble. But I still am happy when I think of the places where I have seen. So likewise, uh, I went to Africa. I traveled a lot. My, my wife joined me a couple of months later because she too is in the same profession. She was working at Pfizer's as an uh, accountant. She wanted to put some uh, time to get experience. So she joined me. I was working with the Copper Mines and she was working for uh, one of the big companies, the Anglo-American uh, Company of South Africa, and the, the, one of the subsidiaries. So we traveled and traveled. And uh, that is something which I really nice. My ambition is to see 100 countries. I'm very close to that. 
<laughs> I am planning to do the 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 Caribbean uh, East tour, which probably will cover seven to eight countries and will be nice. You know? So Africa is, uh, I really, really enjoyed the stay in Africa, uh, Solochana. You know, it was an easy life. All the professionals played golf sometimes, all seven days of the week. <laughs> I'm telling you. So you have lived the life. Absolutely. Right, eight and nine holes on on the weekday, just straight from office, you know, and then eighteen holes of the weekend. And uh, I, I have uh, another thing which I like was to I like to drive, you know. I, I have driven from South Africa to Zambia, I think more than twelve times, taking different different routes. I have driven in America, the UK, the Australia, New Zealand, all these places. That's something which I really enjoyed and the other thing i must tell you is i have multiple hobbies you will not believe me right Mo most of the money that i earned while in zambia i spent on buying stamps i used to buying stamps buying stamps i don't think any of the people <laughs> who are watching it ex actually expected to listen to the because you know a lot of business people never speak about their hobbies and i thank you for saying that because they are, you are also human you also have so this thank you for sharing that yes so i i enjoy because even as a as a young boy i st i was collecting stamps but then got into a more serious thing because uh, I used to even I take part in uh, London auctions and I started collecting a lot of British Commonwealth, mainly the British Commonwealth, all these different different uh, islands because I had a passion for ag uh, geography. In fact, uh, as a young uh, student, I could re remember taking part in, the, in a, one of the uh, contests of, uh, I think, Maliban and Quest, my topic was geography. So I liked geography, so I started collecting these uh, stamps and I spent, I have spent hell of a lot. In fact, one time my wife was telling me, are you mad to spend so much of money in these stamps? But I did not listen to her. I did what I wanted because it was my money, right? <laughs> then after coming back, of course, then I started collecting currency notes of Ceylon. I think I have today got one of the best collections of Ceylon currency notes. That is also one of my great hobbies. And another thing was I started collecting these expensive watches. All the That's interesting. very, very uh, famous brands like, you know, the IWC, Rolex, Aspartes, Philips, you know, and all that. But I never, I never bought them brand new, except for a few uh, watches which I bought brand new. I used to go to uh, uh, Doha, Qatar. I had a place where, you know, the uh, shop we used to get these unwanted gifts of people, you know, rich people. So what is sold for five million, I used to get for about two million, you know. Only thing I didn't have the warranty. So I have these... Uh, uh, passion for, this, for these watches as well. And also I have a few old Crocs, the cars, which uh, I had from the very beginning. Uh, some cars like 170 Mercedes, which I had two of them, which, uh, very rare. And then my father-in-law's 182 of the 180s, like MG's, six or seven vehicles. And now, of course, uh, uh, it's pretty difficult for me to manage all because these old cars you have to keep on driving and all that. So these are my hobbies and also I have a large collection of very expensive paintings. Of paintings? Paintings, okay. you know, Donald Ramanayaka, you know, a lot of Sri Lankan top people. So I have multiple hobbies, but I, I sometimes I myself will thinking how I manage my time, 24 hours, you know, uh, we all have. I wanted to ask, while holding high positions, while having a family life, while being a husband and a father, a hobby, I, you know, 
it's like you know you have lived the life it's not a lot of people think that if it is we should have everything you started saying i had objectives i had dreams and i thought your objective was to be the number one business but you said i wanted to travel you know that is what make the uniqueness of each other because everyone has a uniqueness and i think that's why you always speak very openly very loudly and you say what you think and you you believe in what you say also so pretty before now coming because you when someone looks at you when someone speaks when you hear people think you are a tough you are this kind but if you look at your personal life you are coming from a very i would say very soft and very much um, uh very close to the family the environment and all that uh, now as a person who has all these traveling and everything now if you look back you know sri lanka had a very a uh, dark uh, recently we had a very dark time and i was recently speaking to and you said because something like 30 years we didn't have a effect to the banking but because banks were always safe and but you said no it has affected the banks also why you say that present situation because is it because the isolated situation that has affect the banks or why because we had this for 30 years why this incident affected the bank yeah so well, rochana it is something which i have never seen of course uh, well since coming back i have served in several company both plc's right and mostly plc's and uh, big companies and uh, i think uh, just about 7 8 years ago only that i joined i was uh, invited to join the uh, largest private bank commercial bank yeah believe it or not we have never seen a situation as bad as today we are the non performing advances the banks has reached unprecedented heights mm -hmm. people's disposable income has got reduced to extent where they simply they cannot pay their loans it's not only the uh, personal banking side even on the corporate banking side lot of big big companies are sailing very close to the wind right now the the recent uh, problem that we had now that has devastated the uh, tourist industry yeah we all know about this yes. the tourist industry the government losing 3 billion to and up to 3 billion is not what matters they can always go out borrow the money and they can sort it out but what we have nobody sort of given much thought is that has affected more than 2.3 million people's livelihoods okay that is a a very very grave situation right now look at the number of people who are dependent <coughs> on this industry right you just go out to a resort hotel the tuk tuk sparked out there waiting to get some hires from the tourists the the curio shops right they are waiting to get some business the outside the the chap who is selling the ice creams or the water bottles or some people even trying to get the people the the tour is meant to uh, introduce to women or the women for men you know they are all it's they are depending on the, all these things yes right and the, just look at the people who are supplying food the dry dry food the uh, vegetables the fish the 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 fruits to all these people are. then what about the people the, who are serving them because always these hotels their salaries are generally low they ride on the service charge service charge today look at the the hotels are virtually empty two weeks ago sulochana we have a lovely bungalow in uh, this uh, kirinda i think that was the first time i went to kirinda oh. i knew kirinda about with vihara ma devi and that's what the kalani is so we have come from kalani and all that we heard and <clears throat> i wanted to go to yala i went with couple of my friends you won't believe 
the yala we entered that yala it was a saturday normally it's very crowded uh, they said that 600 the maximum that they take after that they shut the door 600 and there are people impossible people who have been there during that time they say it's not possible to see animal you see a leopard before you could say boot were goose the fellows give this they have the drivers have their mobiles and whole place will be full of vehicles you will see the leopard about 100 meters away if you are lucky the day that we went probably Animals would have thought, why these people have not come? The animals have come to see us. <laughs> we saw so much, so many animals. You will not believe I had a video, right, recording a leopard drinking to the water for five minutes and just cross the road right in front of our jeep. Well, looked at us, you know, like that, you know, wondering why there's nobody to see. There are only two jeeps. So when we came out at about 10.45 in the morning. I asked uh, the chap in the entrance, he said, 30, 50, 35 vehicles on the sofa had gone on a Saturday. And all these vehicles that we saw, one or two people were there. What has happened? The chap who took us on the jeep, he said, sir, after nine days, I got a hire. We paid 6,000 rupees. When I paid 12,000 rupees, you keep this. He really worshipped. Right now, when I asked the the the, this, uh, <coughs> the manager of a commercial bank, he said we have given advances to more than thousand two hundred people this cheap truck fellows. They have to pay their leases fifty sixty thousand a month. So how on earth can they? That fellow is getting uh, he had got a high after so many days. He had to look after his family, the children, with all that. So just imagine the calamity. I mean, people don't understand. The politicians don't understand. Yeah, that's the thing. The country is talking about harmony, peace and all that. We actually, our people didn't make this issue, right? The peace or harmony is nothing that we were, we were actually, we were not fighting with each other. We were living our lives. But somewhere the leadership has gone wrong. Or we cannot blame the leadership because we make those leaders. What has, has actually has gone wrong in Sri Lanka? Is the people are not on the right track or the politicians are not on the right track? The thing is, as far as I see uh, Sulochana, the politicians are not on the right track. It's not that the people, right? I mean, anyway, this coalition, I, I, I'm... I have never taken part in politics. It doesn't matter which party comes to power, right? We support the party which will help to, to grow our country. Yeah, yeah. That is all that what is, we are interested yeah. in. But it has never happened, never worked, right? And I don't know, this is one of the darkest eras which I, I have seen in my whole this series. Because you have to go to the outskirts and speak to the people, right? Because we have now CIC, I'm in the board of CIC, it's one of the largest uh, agribusiness. We have farms all over. When you go and talk to these people, Sulochana, it's very pathetic, very pathetic. Farmers, of course, with bad season, they are dependent on the, you know, uh, they are producers, right? And they, they don't get revenue. I mean, how many people are committing suicide? Yeah. Right? How many people are committing suicide? The politicians don't uh, uh, understand this. And some of the businessmen even in, in the city, they don't understand. Some of them, what they are, right? Some people, uh, what is the problem? Right? I mean, the problem is you must go out to the, to the outskirts and see, speak to the people and see the hardships that they are going. People are having, right? If they are lucky, only two meals, right? children. Even if you go to the house, I know the health ministry did a great job. We have reduced the price of drugs. Yeah, that was fantastic. But the, the, if you go to these most of the remote base hospitals, they don't have drugs, right? They, the bare, bare minimum they have. Obviously, they, uh, the doctors will ask them to 
get it from out. So all, all they, have, they have to pay, right? They don't, simply don't have money. So the, the medicine, medical facilities are absolutely essential. So we will know exactly when you go out the hardships that the people are. Just imagine the politicians, uh, they are, the, the uh, security is beefed up, you know, the person who has been two backups now has three backups, right? And everything is fine, tickety boo for them, right? Well, whereas the, the, the ordinary person is uh, just suffering. I'm very candid, I'm very frank on about what it is. Whatever the right, the, the, the government is in power, what has to be said has to be said. Yeah. Right. So, so we need to uh, sort this out. Do you think that the country has a future with the young? Because we have a very little young generation. Our elderly generation is the highest. So, how do you think the country can move forward in Sri Lanka? No, we have to move to move forward. We have to have right leadership, uncorrupt leadership, uncorrupt leadership. Right. Who think? positive right as long as that is there we can definitely move forward if not we will be just in the same place or we'll be going back it's very difficult to find uncorrupt leadership in a country like us but as you said we have to put our efforts but coming back uh, with the country and with all these issues Will the business community has a strategy to go forward even without the help of not having the right leadership in our country? Do you think? <coughs> the thing is this, uh, Sulochana, it is very difficult for the business uh, businessman to move forward without the right leadership. Right? Absolutely, you need to have the proper leadership. Even the government departments, the BOI, the UDA, the, all these places, you know, we need the support, yeah. right? I mean, start, sometimes you want the environment certificate, right? To get that certificate, you have to bribe 100 people. Yeah, agree on that. Right? Right? Like that, you know, to BOI. I mean, I'm just telling you just uh, off the cuff, right? So you need to have proper people in those positions, right? We, we can't. We can't just start a business if it's going to take a month of Sundays, right? The foreign investor is not going to win, right? And, and for all that, we need to have the proper leadership. Who would say, right, give no tolerance to corruption. I don't say we, they, even in the squeaky clean Finland or any place, there's no 100% uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. freedom. I mean, they are, they are is corruption. But you have to have zero tolerance for this corruption, yeah. but not to this extent. As long as they, they are, we are not going anywhere. Okay. Coming back to Sri Lanka Institute of Directors, you are the present uh, president, and I have seen that uh, you have done a lot of changes. <coughs> If I ask you now, we all are promoting board uh, directorship and all that. How do you think, like, you know, okay, doing a program, but I see, like, as you said, I see a lot of directors are being very qualified directors are becoming now and young, you all are giving opportunity for a lot of young people. But how do you see that directorship itself can make a uh, innovative difference in Sri Lankan business? Because Qualification and innovation is too different. I see a lot of financial background people are taking the leadership where you did the credit and debits only. But innovation is in businesses in Sri Lanka is very low now. So how slid is into this innovative directorship because I didn't see that coming in. I was doing a study in other countries and I see, saw that most of the direct the leadership is giving innovation to the management. So how SLID is going on? <coughs> yeah, that's a good question. Surachana, the main objective of the Sri Lanka Institute Directors is to groom young, upcoming directors. Yeah. Show them the way how to run companies, not efficiently and also ethically. Yeah. That is absolutely important. Yeah, that's one right? word every time. You Efficiently and ethically. 
right? Now we have something called the board leadership training program, which we have, uh, which has started well, and with the assistance of the IFC, International Corporate Governance Team, right? We have uh, updated it, perfected it, and we are having this course twice a year, right? That is something which will will definitely uh, inculcate on the young people, right? It's not only running the companies efficiently, obviously it has to be efficiently, but also ethically with proper corporate governance practices. Yeah. That is absolutely necessary. Then also, we have formed the audit forum, the independent directors forum. Now, I have sat Sulochana more than 15 company boards, more than 15. In most of the places, half the directors are silent. Especially if the chairman and the chief executive is one person. Have you ever seen any of the other executive directors will just speak against it? No. Even the independent directors won't speak against it. There's no point, you know. That type of boards, I would say, absolutely useless. They have to come out with what they feel uh, fearlessly. right? So independent directors forum that we created or we launched, right? we inculcate in directors to be fearless, to come out. Right? I mean, if you are just saying, if we, Sulochana, you say this wall is green, which is white, I say, ah, yes, 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 sir, there is, is a tint of green in that. Now, that type of people you get in most of yeah. the places. Right? We don't need that type of people. You have to come out with this. So they need to, so that, and now, um, next week, I think, a week after, we are going to launch the the women's yes. directors yeah. forum right you know we need both sex we need right gender diversity i mean we need all sorts of diversity i was one of the pioneer pioneers of the sort of uh, promoting this when there's 53 54 percent of the population is women we need the support we need the you know, the the uh, the assistance of the women otherwise you can't grow this country right another important thing I have to tell you here is uh, Sulochana. There is no growth of any country, right? If the inequality, yeah. is that is absolutely essential. Now we are conducting workshops in the outskirts, right? Purely because our backbone of our economy is on the SMEs. These people are having a big problem two big problems, right? One, on one hand, they don't have access to cheap source of funds. When it comes to banks, they are so atrocious in lending to the SMEs. You can't blame the banks because economically, profit is a reward for risk. There's so much of risk in lending to them. So that's how. And the other, way, other thing is, their houses are disorganized. Their companies are they don't run with proper corporate governance practices. Now that is what we are going and doing. We conduct like courses, classes, show them the way how to run these companies, right? With proper governance practices, get them audited, have maintained proper books of accounts, right? All these things we are doing that so that they will get organized and then they will be able to run their businesses properly. But Unfortunately, this country doesn't have proper development banks, right? The two main banks, BFCC and DB, also now privatized. We have small, small other banks, but that's not enough. Because problem is, it is not only the working capital, though you need the money, cheap funds for the working capital, for your research. Yeah, otherwise, you can't compete in the, in the world, yeah. right? You will just get going to extension within no time. So we don't have development banks. They need cheap funds, you know. I would say even banks' hearts will lend them at, at, at very, very high rates. 
It's not not only commercial bank. You know, uh, of course you can't blame the banks. So that is we need to reduce the inequality. If the what is the purpose? Right? We are boasting of 4,000, 4,500 GDP per capita if the entire thing is coming 20% of the population. That's true. That's true. The rich man is getting richer and richer, but the poor man is getting poorer and poorer. The fellow who's having a tuk-tuk, he can't maintain that, he gets into a push bicycle. The fellow, the rich man who is driving a Range Rover Sports, he go, gets into a Bentley. Do you call it growth? So we conduct these workshops all over because we want to buy, give them a helping hand. We want to get their businesses up. So when the, the businesses need no, uh, should not be only on the Western province. It should be all over now your, your areas, Ampares and all those, the Akkara Pattus and everywhere we need. Then only that the inequality will get narrowed. That is one of the most important things uh, what you have to uh, take into account, Sulochana. Without reducing the inequality, there is no joy, right? There is no point just boasting of uh, 4,000, 5,000 GDP per capita. You have to see the narrow, the, that is what the, any government should, their, their top priority should be to reduce the inequality. As a businessman, I would, my advice is, right, we should share our excess, what we have. Yeah. That is absolutely important, right? Look at Bill Gates, look at Warren Buffett. They are with richest men in the world. What are they? They're doing social work in Africa all the time. They're sharing their wealth, right? I don't think whether our top businessmen, rich people are doing that. We must share, right? When, when Alexander the Great, when he died, right, the man who conquered the whole world, he said, keep my coffin open so that you can see I'm going with empty hands. We, we came to this world to empty, empty hands, hands. we, we are going out with it. So what is the problem? So that's what, don't lose my, my advice to businessmen. Don't lose what you have to get more than what you need. Today the businessmen, they, I mean they are ego because of the ego. They just keep going on, uh, expanding, expanding, expanding. At the end of the day, right, increasing the gearing and you know, get into debt finally. You crash. Yeah. Be simple. Remain on the core business. Of course, you need to expand, but not with amount of debt. <laughs> That's why Sri Lanka is full suit, empty pocket. <laughs> Saying that, thank you, Preeti, for sharing. Be so genuine, honest, and. I, that's what your uniqueness why I always like being talking to you and listening to you. Thank you very much for your time. Preeti, there's a small uh, cup next to you with a pen. You have to put your signature and the name because we collect all our guests and one day we want to put it out and say these were the guests who came with Plenty with Sulo and who shared their hearts for our country and for our people and to make a difference. Can you please sign it? Okay, thank you very much, uh, Surochana, okay. for giving me this opportunity. Yes, yeah, thank absolutely. you. Just yeah. take it, I think you can. Yeah. Other side you can sign. Here, no? Yeah. Just my signature. Yeah, your name and the signature would be. Oh, it's in red. Yes. Keep it. That's yeah. Okay. There's a small gift from Plenty with Sulo and a cup with name with Plenty with Sulo to have you, and uh, because that will remind you about this session. Thank you again, uh, Preeti, for joining us, and I hope you enjoyed and you sp spoke very openly, which I think. Uh, uh, our viewers will be very open-minded viewers and you said very rightly about what we have to change. The first thing is being, you know, ethical. Leadership has to be ethical for the followers to be ethical, right? And you said we, we came to the world without having an, anything, we didn't have anything and we are going without same. anything and same way same way we have a responsibility to give it something back to this world and you were pressing on that 
and you also spoke out your heart for the people who has no voice people who are same as us humans and who are sri lankans who are depend on the global economy but they have no voice and thank you for being that genuine and honest thank you again today we had a very interesting interview with preeti he spoke about the sri lankan economy and ethical leadership which no one speaks about when a leadership is ethical the followers become ethical living by example is something we all have to practice and he also he said as business leaders and educated people we have a role to play in our economy in our country and i hope that we all will understand not just understand follow it and take it into our habits because habits become our values and thank you preeti again and i hope that you all will subscribe to plenty with sulu be safe